So I would say going into year two that we have learned a lot about how we need to um, get students going, get parents going on board. So um, our supervisor has implemented a mandatory orientation for all students and parents uh, where they go through the RCVA handbook. And then Mr. Trailer has developed a parent and student training course that is going to be integrated into Buzz as a unit that they have to complete before beginning the content-based assignments. Mr. Trailer? Right. I mean, that's in process. But yes, yes, <laughs> I'm going to going to develop this. And we've got a lot of topics that we're going to work through. So it's 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 going to be good, I think. So one of the things we've noticed with with students is that we have this great opportunity with virtual to do some things that we can't do in the classroom. Uh, people oftentimes say that that we don't get to offer as good an education as the classroom. And I've I've never believed that was true with virtual. It's different. There's a little bit more of a responsibility on the student to sometimes initially look at some of that inf- some of that information. But as they turn in assignments, we have a, an opportunity in, in virtual that, that you don't have on an on site. And so we need to take advantage of that so that we can be as good as possible. And so when a student turns in any kind of assignment, one of the things that we like to do is, first of all, the feedback goes directly back to the student for every assignment. I know that when I was in the classroom trying to, trying to give good feedback to every single assignment was, and then hand the papers back, it was an expect the students to look at it. It was just kind of like, really? Is that really going to happen with every assignment? Almost impossible. And so what you can do then is you can, Buzz gives you the opportunity to shoot audio and video, throw in links, copy and paste pictures into this feedback area. You can give students a great idea of what they've done wrong. You can even use what, uh, a program that's been widely used called Screencastify. There's also Screencast-O-Matic that you can use. And what you can basically do is, is pull the student's document, download it if you need to, take a screenshot, stick it in a program called OneNote or something else that will let you show that document. And then you can record yourself right next to the document, marking up what they've done wrong and talking them through how to do a better job next time or really this time. You can say, here's your grade right now. If you want a perfect score, resubmit it. I'll allow you to resubmit it. Or I'm not going to grade it until it's resubmitted and so and until it's fixed. And that's that's a really good tool that you can use to say, we want perfection. You know, we talk a lot about that in on-site instruction, trying to get students to achieve mastery. And with virtual, it's a little bit easier because you can say, it's going to be perfect before we take it if you want to. You can go to that extreme if you really want to. And for a lot of my assignments, I, I do say, let's fix this. Right. Let's, Let's capitalize those, you know, those letters at the beginning of the word. Let's let's look at this essay and, and see how we can rework this. So, a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities there. And so, bouncing off of what Mr. Trailer is saying, um, one of the things that I've noticed in language arts, there's a lot of project-based learning, and it asks students to create posters or create a brochure. Well, because we're virtual, I've given students that opportunity to use their Google tools to create those things. So instead of doing a paper pencil poster, they have the option to then create a digital poster or a Google slide presentation um, or some of those publisher type tools and really be innovative with their project based learning. And another thing that Buzz lets you do, and we've, we've realized how easy this is, is the submission box will let you submit a picture straight from the laptop. And students are learning that they can also use their phones if they need to. And so they mm-hmm. can also, they can take pictures with their phone and then, and then it goes to their Google Drive and then they submit it or they can email it as a, as a draft and they can just open it back up in their email. I and mean, there's a variety of ways that students can turn in pictures. I want for next year, I'd like to look into the idea of having students uh, have conversations with their parents and other students film that on a Google Meet and turn it in for an assignment. There, there are a lot of options here. And, and I think involving parents in these assignments and, and getting that to be a, a family ordeal is good. As long as the student, as long as the student, the, the parents are doing the assignments, but we want, right. to, we want to see the parents sometimes involved in that process. And I think that's a benefit of a virtual program because 
parents, uh, when you send your child to school, you really don't know what they're doing in their classroom. And this, this program allows our students and parents to be very involved and work closely together where they might not have that opportunity otherwise. I talk to parents a lot about what their students are learning, and we work through some of the, some of the lessons together. And for parents who value that, that's, that's awesome. I know some of our elementary parents have really enjoyed that aspect of our program. Definitely.